We see the haggard, unwashed face of a man. He lives in the house his grandparents built. It's at the end of Rose Street. He was born in this house. His parents died in this house. He is an only child, and like so many others in the heartland, had nowhere else to go after his parents passed. He inherited the property, the house, and everything in it. For a hundred and eight years this place has stood. For a hundred and eight years this place has been lived in by the same family. My family. My grandparents were <laughs> misers, and by God, that helped them survive the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. They never let anything go to waste. They taught their children those principles, but as each generation goes, the principles of the previous evolve or erode. And that miserly way became greed. And this man's parents, despite constantly walking the line of poverty, dug themselves into debts as they worked to accumulate more and more. A new car, a new tractor, New television, new washing machine, trying to fill the void that greed leaves after every transaction. This worn, filthy man now stands among his inheritance. His feet itch. That new tractor, rusted out in the field behind the house. That new television, sitting on the front porch with a shattered screen and the veneer curling up from years of exposure. That new car, <laughs> hasn't run in 20 years, sits in the yard dry rotting, home to Vermin, 
vermin that occupy more space in the house than man does. We pull back from our view of this man. He stands in a room of the house that you cannot identify through the mounds of rubbish and rot that have amassed. He shoes a fly that lands on his cheek. There's a look of angst on his face. We pull back further and we can see a dozen people in neon yellow shirts making their way in and out of the door of the house. They are all wearing N95 masks, safety glasses, and heavy-duty work gloves, shovels in hand. We follow one of the cleaning crew to another room and watch them push their scoop into the mound of garbage to attempt to clear a path through. A trash can is filled, and then another, and another. (laughs) The flies are thick in here. The scoop works its way through decades of refuse. Vinyl records, styrofoam containers, the rotten corpses of rats, discarded clothing, things piled on years ago being uncovered. The scoop scrapes along the floor and stops on something too solid to penetrate. The worker slams the scoop into the pile to dislodge it, and a black-green liquid oozes from underneath the shovel. None of the workers in the house can get their masks out of the way fast enough, and they vomit into them from the stench. Then again on the floor, seeing what they just did to their masks, they violently retch over trash cans, some attempting to flee, seeking a toilet, a seek, fresh air, some type of refuge. The splash of vomit hits the floor again. Another worker comes to see what's wrong and immediately leaves the house and pulls out their cell phone with a retching heave. And we pull back further. And the worker on the phone is pointing back at the house in panic. <laughs> the other neon shirts. <laughs> you look at them come running. And we pull back further. We can see the roof is caved in on the back corner of the house. The old washing machine, so new so long ago, sits in the backyard full of black water, flies swarming. It's always been this way. (laughs) Suffering. Cupidity. Destitution by depletion. From birth till death. And we pull back further and can see the highway as it runs through Providence. Tractor trailers and sedans, minivans and pickups, all streaming thoughtlessly through this forgotten place. Do you see them? Dead-eyed as they drive to nowhere. Not a single traveler (laughs) noticing nor caring. That another small town along this winding road is dying. (laughs) Dead. Daisy. You're pulling yes. up. You're pulling up to the Quick Mart, and you see some lights flashing in front, in front, in front of the Blue Rose. Um, the first thing I want you to do is make a perception roll for me. Let's 
16. Well, nope, I'm on the wrong area. 12. 12. Nice. It's 1 a.m. and you're headed to the Quick Mart. Why might Daisy be going to the Quick Mart at 1 a.m.? You out of smokes or is this for beers? It's a Friday night. Yeah. Or it was Friday night. I guess it's really early on a Saturday morning now. I tend to stay in when it gets dark, but not when I'm out of smokes. I kind of need those. So I'm definitely there for a, a bit of a fix. What's your state of mind like? It's fine. Well, it was fine. Just a normal night. I saw some weird stuff out in the pasture, but... Well, on a state of... I've like, seen a lot of weird stuff. On a 1 to 10 scale, having to go get cigarettes at 1 in the morning, is that like normal? You don't really care? It could be any time of the day. It's 1 a.m. is 1 p.m. Or... Uh, I'm a bit irritable. I've been having a hard time sleeping with uh, the bigger animals being right outside of my house. Bess has been barking a bit more, so I mean, I'm not happy if that's what you're asking. Yeah. When you see a bunch of swirling cherry lights over from in front of the blue rose, how does that change your mood? I go from uh, from irritable to worried pretty quick. I mean, that's that's Blue Rose. I spend quite a bit of time there. That's where Sabella not only works, but it's where she lives. So I'm concerned. So probably not too much uh, small talk with uh, whoever's working the counter tonight. Get your cigarettes and go. <laughs> Oh, no, not at all. Hardly ever any small talk. I usually walk in and they know what I want. There was a little bit of slight sarcasm in that. Then we will skip ahead. You get your cigarettes. We won't worry about the small talk. Whoever's there is just as weird as you expected them to be. Pulling Night shift. Yeah. Pulling up to the Blue Rose, well, as close as you can get, the cross street with Maine, Martin Street, is blocked by three county sheriffs and two state police vehicles. The county coroner's van is there, and two ambulances, one from Missouri and one from Kansas. And I want you to um, make me a coolness roll which is keep it together but I'm using attributes because your guys are still sleepers so they're not official moves but I want to uh, gauge your your mental state as you pull up on the Did blue rose act under pressure or willpower Oh, what did I say? Coolness is act under pressure. Yeah, sorry, I have the attribute here. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm sorry, willpower. <laughs> coolness will come into play. So, the rule book. Yeah, no, when I ask for coolness, because I have it just listed here, um, we'll, we'll refer to okay. that 13. So I'll, I'll give you credit for the role. But yeah, give me a willpower. Okay. A 10. Yeah. Nice. So with right that in mind, mind, yeah, with that in mind, um, describe to me um, your state of mind as you pull up on the scene. And if you want to know what you see or as far as people go or something, just ask and I'll tell you. Yeah, so who do I see as far as locals go? 
Like, I understand there's a lot of the, police around. Yeah. Um, Roy's um, blazer or whatever he drives is there. I'm assuming it's probably an SUV of some sort in my mind. I probably asked him. But of course. It's Crown there. Remember? Oh, Crown yeah. The, the Crown Vic. Right. Thank you. Um, is so it's, described it. Yeah. It's there, but it is pulled up not with what appears to be the rush of all the other emergency vehicles that are there. The others are county and state police vehicles. Um, the undersheriff is oh. there. The actual sheriff is not there, but the undersheriff's vehicle is there, which is, you know, a nice Lincoln SUV. The two state police vehicles are there. The county coroner, the van for the county coroner, the one that they used to haul away dead bodies is there there are two ambulances which is sort of confusing because one's from missouri one's from kansas but that happens a lot in this town that emergency vehicles from both states will arrive at the same place at the same time causes this little bit of contention you can probably assume that kansas law enforcement has already arrived and has been shooed away crime scene tape is strewn all about the blue rose across the street and in front of it floodlight stands have been erected and are shining onto the blue rose all the lights inside are on roy is standing on the front sidewalk with a uniformed state police officer he is blood spattered elliot is being interviewed by another officer and you see sabella sitting on the bumper of the missouri ambulance with a blanket around her and we will go ahead and bring them all into the scene as well so yeah go ahead and describe for so, me yeah i i park and i glance over and um i don't like that it's the blue rose i don't like that right away and i go in and i get my smokes but the whole time i'm in the store i'm distracted and trying to look out the window but i i don't have the best eyesight kind of uh, only have one of those and I get my smokes without so much as a glance to the clerk and go outside and I light one and my foot's kind of tapping against the sidewalk because I don't like law enforcement and that's not exactly a secret in this town. Um, and I'm kind of observing the scene and I, I light a cigarette and take a few drags and look over and seeing Sabella, like if anyone was there watching Daisy, they would see that she visibly relaxes and her foot stops tapping. Well, let me um, press you just a little so bit. And then. Sorry, I, we've got like a, like a one second delay on me talking and you hearing it on Zoom where you're at. It's, um, if uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to push the issue. Um, since you rolled a 10, you would actually have to choose a certain emotion. So give me a negative emotion Ooh. that this makes you feel i'm gonna let you be daisy tough don't i won't i won't take that away from you but um this does sting uh, sting somehow you tell me how or tell the audience how well the blue rose has been in sabella's family for a long time and i know it hasn't really gained too much attention and I know the last time Sabella probably saw this many police lights was probably the death of her parents. And so I get a lot of strange emotions and I'm not very good at handling emotions. Um, I'm trying to find the list of emotions I can feel according to the rules book, but she would overall be fairly paranoid. No, that's a good question. Um, you can ask. <laughs> Angry, sad, scared, guilt-ridden, um, obsessed, distracted, um, or haunted, of course, are there as well. But I would assume one of angry, sad, or scared would be from Daisy. Uh, I mean, are you scared? You obviously see that I none of it your friends have died. It would be more guilt-ridden because it spirals mm -hmm. into those thoughts of the police and how they weren't able to save her parents and how she, Daisy was God knows where when the accident happened and 
she obviously wasn't there when whatever happened now happened. And so even though Sabella is okay, like she does feel a little bit of guilt. And of course she puts those feelings in a box and stuffs them down deep and will never talk about them. But inside, yeah, she, she's got quite a bit of guilt. Hmm. Guilty that you weren't there for whatever happened, even though you don't know what happened. Yeah. What do you do? I'll finish my cigarette stomp it out and then leaving my truck in the parking lot of the quick mark i'll walk across the street only jay walking in front of all these officers and go to the blue rose nice we will I'll kind of like nod stiffly to roy <laughs> and that's a good transition as the camera then will pan to roy who is standing on the front sidewalk in front of the Blue Rose with a uniformed state police officer whose name is Clifford. Roy is splattered in blood. Roy, I want you to make a willpower roll so that we can get a gauge on your frame of mind. That is not great. That is a seven. That is a seven. So keeping that in mind, give us uh, a narrative uh, description. Tell the audience what's going on with Roy inside and if that reflects outside, how so. Well, between dealing with that bullshit in the fucking uh, trailer park earlier and running into that crackhead's fucking brother in the alleyway outside and then needing to gun down the one inside, Roy's had just entirely too much shit shoveled in his face this more, uh, this evening. He's just tired. Can't deal with it anymore. What's Roy like when he's... It's been a long... Like that. ...fucking night. Downright irritable. Do people need to worry? He's probably not being very polite to Clifford in the short... Make me a perception roll. Good lord. It is a night for bad rolls for Roy. That is a six. Oh, Roy. Take the hold, Curtis. Take the hold. <laughs> so Clifford says... All right, deputy, I want you to uh, run me through it just uh, one more time so I can make sure I get everything. And he readies his pen and notepad and wants you to tell the story. And you know how it is in law enforcement, especially when you've been involved in a situation. You know, then the next guy comes and tell me the story. And then the next guy can tell me the story. And you have to repeat it four or five times, mostly because, well, it's law enforcement. So they're trying to find a hole because that's what they do. Jesus fucking Christ, Clifford. Are you fucking kidding me right now? How many times I got to tell you the fucking story? I, I, mm, he looks around. I think I'm the last one. For real? Last one? I don't have to tell this fucking thing again? Hey, you told your boss already, right? Yeah, man. Come yeah, I'm. I'm getting. This is for this. Fucking home. Clean this bastard's fucking guts off my goddamn face and go to fucking sleep. I'm done with this shit, man. It has been a real long fucking night. Yeah, I know. I, I got to get this one for uh, you know for the official state record. So you know, just you can you can bullet point it you, for me if you oh, want. For you the know. love of fuck. Okay. Uh, shit heel in there. Dead body. Brains all over everything. Uh. 
he and his brother must have been fucking casing this joint all fucking night. Uh, Sibby and her friend L were inside, I guess. I don't fucking know. They were upstairs. He was fucking... Anyway, I'll start at the beginning. I fucking saw somebody moving down the alleyway. Um, and so, you know, flipped my lights on, went down the alley, ran into Shitheel's brother, chased him off. Uh, but then I saw that the back door had been jimmied open. Uh, so I went inside. The fucking girls were screaming their fucking heads off. They locked themselves in a room. Uh, I didn't see nobody. Uh, so I told them to get the fuck out. So, uh, they came out. Uh, Sibby went off somewhere. And then all of a sudden, fucking shit heels got a knife to her neck. So, I took the fucking shot. Then I unloaded on the bastard, because he wouldn't fucking stop coming. While you're telling your story, he's looking at you with that state cop of superiority look that you... Fucking tweakers, Cliff. You know love. tweakers. And he reaches over there during a break in his writing. And um, dabs his fingertip in some of the bigger splatter of blood that is on your shirt that has not completely dried. And you're talking, and he looks at you and listens like he's not really paying attention, but he's got this blood on his fingertip. And he kind of rubs it a little bit like this. And as you're finishing the story, you see he goes... And he's doing that again and again. He does it like four or five times. And he's the last time he does it, you he, you see his eyes close. And you can almost see like his eyeballs sort of flutter around in his head like some kind of an idiot. Boy, Cliff, you're a fucking weird one, aren't you? So is that it then for the, uh, the uh, what'd you call them, shit heels? Mm-hmm. You best go track his brother down. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do that. And we're going to uh, segue over to Elliot, who is also being interviewed by another officer, one of the county um, investigators from the district attorney's office that came in with the undersheriff, um, who would be Roy's boss. Um. Yeah, you're still on the screen for this one. Everybody who's here. The back of your shirt and pants are completely covered in blood. And um, I would like for you two to roll me a willpower. As everybody is still in the uh, here in the front of the blue rose. Oh, that oh look good for me. boy, we are on a roll tonight, aren't we? It's actually on par for what I discussed with my writer over the last couple of weeks, is that, that everybody should be pretty fucking shook up. There was just a shooting in front of your faces. We are not from Manhattan <laughs> as Roy takes a drink. Sorry, that cracked me up. Um, enjoy your Friday night. Um, hashtag should heal. Elliot, taking your four into consideration, which would be a minus two on your stability. You can mark it if you want to. I'm not keeping serious track of those things because we're at such a slow burn. I'll just play with it tonight if I need to. Describe for the audience your thoughts, feelings, if that manifests itself physically, how so if at all, anything else that you would use to describe Elliot in this particular situation? I mean, I just had a dude's tooth in my head. And so she's at this point of like, beyond this is happening. I'm, I'm tuned out from the world. I'm like staring at a wall and I just don't want to deal anymore. I'm disassociated. I'm just staring at the wall. 
hearing womp, 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 womp. And all I just keep seeing in my head is is a dead body on the ground and staring at Sabella's face and seeing the blood all over Roy and it's all I can think about. And I don't really process what anyone is saying to me and I don't I don't hear it and I can't hear it. So her face is literally just stock staring at a wall. Like can't even look anybody in the eye. Was it Merle or it was Carl was the other one, right? Do I have that my notes right? Carl and Merle. Mm-hmm. If not, I'm sure chat will let me know. Which one did you see dead on the floor? Merle. Um Oh, I love fours. Make a uh, roll plus soul, a soul roll for me, would you please? See through the illusion. Although you don't know what the illusion is. Oh, and the hits just keep on coming, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Another one from our top ten. Um... Your vision of Merle lying there. You can see the blood still kind of oozing out. Comes to mind because, you know, shouldn't do that if the heart stopped beating, right? Shouldn't that stuff stop? I mean, the actual gloop, gloop of blood out of a wound and your image sort of zooms in on him and his eyes open and he gives you a grin teeth what few he has left are mostly black and brown the best parts are yellow they don't even look like tooth shapes really the only reason that you know their teeth is because that's where teeth are supposed to be when a person smiles but he does give you a big old grin and a wink make me a perception roll oh (laughs) wait hold on how does that happen (laughs) you are finishing your details for the county investigator and as you were doing it he does something odd he picks his nose he must have done it just just out of habit or something not even realizing that you were talking to him he was you know riding he's got his head down and then you see him reach up with his finger and just sort of dig at it for a good two, three seconds, an uncomfortable amount of time, right? Anything more than scratch, scratch is too long. This is more like inside scratch, 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 scratch. Oh, there it is. Got it. Pulls it out. Wipes something on the side of his pants. Looks back up at you takes a few more notes and you can see this little trickle of blood start to ride you know come down his nose just a little bit just a small you know some inner digital trauma to the nasal passageway and then you hear Roy raise his voice about something um, to some state vehicle obviously irritated and you see the um, Kansas ambulance drive away sort of speed away like the driver was mad or something and the most interesting thing and I'm just going to leave you with this and then we're going to go back to Daisy and Sabella which is I assume who she was walking towards there are some of those little mud flaps not the great big trucker mud flaps but some of those little mud flaps 
that a person could buy and put on like a pickup truck or an ambulance. And it says, ass, grass, or gas, nobody rides for free. And you see the ambulance speed away. Daisy, I assume you were going over to see Sabella. Or was there some other place you were going to stop along the way? Uh, yeah, I'm mostly going towards Sabella. I pass by Roy and give him a awkward, tight nod, um, but then go to Sabella. And if she's talking to an officer, I just go, get. No, she is um, uh, being treated for acute stress by an EMT there at the uh, ambulance. She's got dried blood in her hair. Sabella, go ahead and make me uh, your willpower roll. We'll share the love. Let's see if your luck continues. <laughs> if your roll is crap, yeah. too. Maybe Elliot changed things with the 20. We'll see. I'm not holding out hope. Mm. Slight not decline. Too shabby. <laughs> slight decline. Sabella, I'm gonna Everything's have. a slight decline. He wants us to 20. fail. Yeah. <laughs> I I enjoy you guys succeeding. I am your number one fan. <laughs> I do like Rocky Roads. Um, Sabella, you get the same question. Describe for the audience your thoughts, feelings, any sort of manifestations of those thoughts or feelings for the audience, please. Yeah, so everything feels like she's underwater. Uh, I hear the ringing in my ears. And it's deafening. Uh, it's like I can hear the gunshot over and over and over. And the lights, uh, all of the all of the lights and the and the same noises and the radio chatter. It's all too familiar. And it feels like her heart, my heart, is pounding in my chest. And it just sounds like ringing in my ears. And, and she, I, I really don't know where I am. I, I'm outside. I know. But what just happened? Mm -hmm. You, you opened yourself up there, Sabella. Make me a um, soul roll, please. Soul roll. I know. It sounds, oh, it, it sounds much cooler than it is, really. My soul roll was great. It was a 21. <laughs> nice. The... Thoughts of those, the, the underwater feelings. I like that. Are strong. However, when your thoughts and feelings sort of drift into the gunshots, it is in just those moments before Daisy steps up to you and tells this EMT to. Tells this yeah. EMT to. <laughs> right there it is. I walked on it. Um, to get yes, timing is off. Um, yeah, Daisy jumps into uh, hang, your hang on a water second. like a cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and just to put this in perspective, the gunshots that you are hearing as this vision, and before Daisy can interrupt your horrible post-traumatic thoughts is somehow a flash of Daisy laying waste to some teenagers 
on a pier at the pit strip. You know, oh my the, the, the flawed memory. Just you, drilling into them. You don't know why that flashed in your head, but maybe it's just your psychic sensibilities. And at that moment, Daisy has approached you and her aura has bled into your energy. So that, that could be what happened. I, I can't explain it. However, now Daisy has run up on you and interrupted your thoughts by telling the EMT to get the scene is yours. She, or Daisy, I am often misunderstood in my emotions and she is very stressed and very worried, especially seeing the crusted blood in your hair and the look on your face. She's seen that look so many times, the faraway look of a soldier or a companion. And she looks very hard and angry, but she's not. And she yells at him or firmly says, get and like stares at him until he leaves and then puts a hand on her hip and looks at you somewhat disapprovingly. You call me. Anything happens, you call me. I am the first person you call. And then she drops her hand and just reaches out with one arm and puts it like around your head and pulls you in close to her chest in a form of a hug with her hair hand like in your hair and she just combs out a bit of the flux of blood and reaches up her other hand and picks out a few more. I'll just look at you and it uh, my eyes are really glassy like I want to cry but I'm not crying. I just give you the the saddest look that you think you've ever seen. But she doesn't say anything. I sort of just like pick the blood out of her hair for a moment and I'm not gonna ask what happened. Daisy has had her own traumas and doesn't talk about them, so. Um, I can kind of get a hint that it wasn't good. Uh, and after a bit of that, I pull away and I've got both of my hands on her shoulders. Do you want to stay with me tonight? Uh, I just kind of shake my head. Uh... No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. No, you're not. I, I don't want to put you out. I offered. I'll, I'll be fine. I have. Sabella, I live in a three-story house by myself with a dog. I've got the room. You can even bring your little friend. Oh, you know his name. <laughs> nah, the the one, the one, and she vaguely gestures over to L. Uh oh, oh, oh fuck. And your like... cat. What, what little friend did you think I was talking about again? Yeah, I thought you were talking about my cat. <laughs> Oh, you had something to tell me, per se. Oh, no. It got, no. And she, like, she, like, rubs her head, finally kind of, like, coming to, like, just Daisy talking to me is, is enough to kind of bring me back to some sort of reality. L. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Where... And she's kind of, like, looking wildly to, like, where D 
Daisy pointed and until no, I was just going to take a hand off your shoulder and I reach into my jacket and pull out a cigarette and just offer it to you as you start to like come back to it. Are you, are you looking yeah, for Elliot? Take it. Take it. Yes. <laughs> Where that bitch. She, um, has just finished up with her interview. So she is sort of, uh, you're just, what do you do after your, the interview? You are just sort of standing there. Um, if you scan the horizon, you make eyes with Sabella. There, I've put you two together. <laughs> I was going to say, Elliot doesn't really move towards you. She just kind of stares at you like... Hey, what? you, girl with the sun. Over here. Roy, you've also finished up your conversation. You can obviously hear Daisy calling the group over. Is this something you want to get in on? Yeah, I'll uh, meander over that direction, much as I don't particularly want to be face-to-face -face with Daisy Hamilton. So then as the area of the far of you, far of you, gets tighter and tighter, you are obviously aware of the presence, so now you are all together. See how I magically did that? Game Master. Daisy, what the fuck are you doing here? Roy, are you a girl with a son? I don't think so. Wait, what? I call for her, not you. No, what, what, okay, what the fuck are you doing here? I was getting smokes. Quick Mart's that direction. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no shit. My, my truck's over there. I was getting smokes. This is my... And for a second, I almost think of saying daughter, but that's not true. <laughs> there's, there's a household of my friend, and she's covered in blood, and I'm the closest thing she has to a family, so I think I have a right to be here. Fair enough. And I'll uh, look over at, you know, whoever the closest other authority figure is and just shout at him. Are we all clear to go? Yeah, there are. They're going to continue to process this crime scene, um, but you are all, um, yeah, free to go. They recommend that you all go to the emergency room, you know, to deal with stress and that sort of thing. But you're country folks, so I'm sure any recommendation to go see a doctor is in ear, in one ear and out the other, as it is with me. Um, so, you know, you get the usual, the typical, you know, goodbyes. Um, Sabella, they do inform you that this crime scene is um, going to be closed down, locked off to the public for, at a minimum, of seven days so you are going to be out for a while um your emt comes and tells daisy that sabella needs to go spend tonight at the hospital her stress and anxiety seem to be measuring off the charts and um we would like to uh keep an eye on her as it were but with those facts in mind, you guys can continue your conversation. And then, yes, you are all free to do what you want. If that's the end of it, then that's the end of it. All right. Miss uh, L, you going to be all right tonight? She kind of slowly swings her head up to you. And it's like it's just now hit me that my entire back is soaked in blood. And so you see her kind of pull her t-shirt forward and then just kind of stare at you and slightly nod. Listen, if they're going to be taking Sibby in for the night down at the hospital, I mean, you might, you might want to go with her. You two have been through 
entirely too much this evening. So we'll make sure y'all are all right. All right. Bro, oh, I'd like a word. I expect you would. Fine. Tibby, you gonna go with him? You gonna go to the hospital? I, I, I don't got any money to to pay for that. Well, who knows? They'll do a fucking GoFundMe or some shit. I'll dig up some old gold. I got holes all over the yard. Oh my god, I don't need Daisy, your... don't fucking no. say that shit out loud. God damn it. Oh, what are you gonna do? I mean, you don't know half this fucking town. If anybody comes on my private property, I'll shoot him. I'll take care of it real quick. I'll work. For the love of God. He can't... Yeah, alright, fine. Sibby, go to the hospital. Uh... Miss Elliot, if you feel like you need to, I would recommend it as well. What what the fuck do you want? She or <laughs> I um uh, I nod to Sabella uh, with a promise that I'll stay at the hospital with her and kind of take Roy aside a little bit because I do want to find out what happened, but I don't want to talk about this in front of the people. It just happened too. All right, so what exactly went down here? A couple of fucking tweakers were trying to break in. God knows fucking why. Not like she's got that much money in there. I mean, she she makes a decent living. Well, she makes enough to survive, I'm sure. Oh. Anyway, I chased one of them off. I didn't realize the other one had gone inside. He must have been hiding somewhere. I didn't see him when I got How in. How do you not realize that? Is it is it your duty to protect the citizens and make sure the citizens are safe and not trying to go chase off? Well, I shot that motherfucker fucking 14 addicts. fucking times, didn't I, Daisy? Oh, great, but you didn't protect those two girls there. They're still Have here, you seen aren't the look they? On their face? They are too young. Too young to have that type of look on their face, Roy. You might have think that you've done something here tonight, but you failed them. You Daisy, failed shut the fuck girls. up. You don't think I I wish I hadn't gotten here sooner? You don't think I could have kept those two pieces of shit from trying to even break in there in the first place? I can't be fucking everywhere all the fucking time. What the fuck do you think I am? Hmm? I got here. That's the fucking important part. They're still here. And that motherfucker's dead. Any? Now get the fuck out of my face. Well, shit, someone's grumpy, aren't they? <sighs> she does I care about that girl. look a little, like, put in her place a little bit. Like, she, like, I kind of take a bit of a step back and look you over. I know you care about that girl, Daisy. Hell, we all do. I'm, I'm glad you're going to be there for her, all right? You and I may not agree on things damn near 100% of the time. As long as you take care of her, that's, that's fine. All right? All right. One more thing. Do you mm -hmm. think I shot those, that boy, do you think I shot at those kids? Well, I know you shot at them. Well, I don't yes, think I you shot, shot at them, but I... I don't I fucking know, Daisy, that... The fucking story that you and Sibby are trying to sell me. We ain't, ain't trying to sell ain't, you nothing. It ain't what the fucking. Listen, I shouldn't be telling you this. It ain't what the fucking coroner's saying, all right? So maybe fix your fucking story. I think you need a better coroner. Well, you can go there talk to him. He's right the fuck over there. There was something fucking twisted in that boy. I did not shoot him. There was... <laughs> no one believes me. No one ever does. No one ever... No one, everyone just thinks crazy Daisy Hamilton on the property outside of town. 
You well, didn't you don't see help that. your fucking case. You need to go to bed. We'll talk later. Well, I'm sure we fucking will. And I turn from him and don't say anything else about it. It's dropped at this point. <laughs> Roy goes over to the Crown Vic, uh, gets in, and just kind of sits there in silence for a little bit. I'm looking at myself. There's, of course, still blood splatter all over everything. Mm. Keep those thoughts in mind, Roy, because we're going to change to the next scene, which is actually you. Um... Don't click that, Curtis. That's the wrong button. The next day. Let me get rid of this daisy music. All right. Sheriff's Deputy Roy Applebaum. I'm pounding that into my brain so I can quit calling you Officer Roy. You're headed for a drink at Wendell's. How often do you get to do that? Or is this just because yesterday, 24 hours ago, well, not 24 hours ago, but yesterday, we'll stay, was when uh, the shooting had happened? Well, being that I'm kind of the only law in this town, I don't expect that it's often enough I do most of my drinking at home rather than at Wendell's but I pop in every now and then mostly to clear the rabble out when they get too feisty so you think this might have something to do with the pressure of that shooting I'm alluding now to those thoughts you were having in the car as we change scenes just to let you know what's going on it's about dinner time it's hot out the humidity is very high and there is definitely a storm blowing in um whatever state of mind you're in you are going to windles at this particular moment with having a drink seems to be of primary focus you might have some mm -hmm. excuses on as you find yourself pulling up in front of Wendell's, a truck familiar to you pulls up right next to you, sort of quickly, slams on the brakes, and it is Will Hutchinson, whom you've had the occasion to run across a few times lately. So, Will jumps out of his vehicle. And um, he's kind of a big guy. He's probably was a bully in high school. Um, you know, very uh, overbearing. Thinks he pretty much runs and owns everybody. And you listen. And then if he lets you talk, you talk. Is sort of his general, you know, premise as he goes through life. Um, He's obviously followed you here and stopped as he is directly approaching you, getting out of your car. Go ahead and make a intuition roll for me so that I've got that on the books. And if you are thinking that you're going to have to um, small talk this guy or somehow sort of shake him off with elusive information, you might go ahead and make a charisma roll because I will ask for it. With a 14, you can definitely tell that he is upset and directed towards you. Not upset, upset, but serious. And um, well, deputy, another goddamn shooting in our little town. Are you going to do something about this crazy woman or uh, are me and the boys going to have to deal with that? I believe it was me that did the shooting, William. (laughs) 
doesn't matter. Right? We can obviously... Uh, what to fucking do with that. We can obviously put her in the place. She's a goddamn nuisance in this place, amongst other things as well. And it is our job, yours and I, deputy, to get this stuff out of here. Uh, maybe you don't remember. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody ever told you, but, uh, you know, we... We know things, me and my boys, about you and your sheriff's department and other deputies. It would probably be in uh, your best interest to, uh, you know, fall in line. Let's get this taken care of. You know, we get this riffraff cleaned out of here. And she's a bigger part of it. We can we can get them tweakers whipped yeah, into will. shape. We don't have to be Shut shooting the fuck them. Up. Oh, okay. That's the way you want to be about it. Well, you may not know this, but I did you a favor, a pretty fucking big favor, some time ago. And I think you ought to keep that in mind as we proceed onward in this conversation. All right. See, now we're starting to see eye to eye. You get a little on me, and get a little on you. Now, we don't have to deal with any of that, right? We just mm. got to get this uh, nonsense cleared out of here. Are you... Listen, Will, you and I have been friends for a long time. I respect you. I appreciate what you do for this town. Now, what I will say is that I am the fucking law in this town. You hear me? This will be dealt with in the same way that everything else is dealt with in this fucking town through me. Now, I know you got some friends. We all do. We got those friends for specific reasons. And they're, of course, great friends, very helpful in a lot of ways, especially dealing with troublesome individuals. Daisy Hamilton, while she is a troublesome individual, just in general, across <laughs> the board, was not the perpetrator that broke into the Blue Rose. One of those, though, is still around. So why don't you and our mutual friends Go track that piece of shit down and take care of him. Hmm? Do that first, and then we'll deal with Daisy Hamilton. He reaches in to sort of give you a big clap on the back and in the same movement turn his figure back towards his truck with a chuckle and then turns his face back towards you and with a smile. Like, um, almost like he's proud of you. There we go, Roy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking. We're on top of that. Have no worries. All right, brother. We'll be seeing you around. And he uh, starts walking back towards his truck. Appreciate you, Will. Have a good day now. Any thoughts you want to share before you go in and get a beer or whatever your drink of choice is? Nope. Just trying to clear all of that shit out of my mind in the first place, which is why I'm here at all. Gotcha. Wendell, if I haven't mentioned it before, is the Wendell Sailor, owner of the cafe and bait. He's 38 years old, slightly balding. Um, there is some handsomeness to the man. He is uh, its scuffed up in his worn appearance. As you probably have found out, I'm sure if you've been policing in this area any length of time, he was um, a rather popular uh, in high school football, you know, athlete, uh, good with all the girls, um, until a car crash. Uh, at age of 19. Why don't you um, make me a 
intuition is that the one i'm looking for no i'll let you into it or you can perceive so that you can pick up on a few little clues that Wendell, you are a police officer after all. He welcomes you warmly coming in. 18. 18. Ah, Deputy Roy, business or social? Oh, very much social, Mr. Sailor. What will it be? Oh, fuck me running. Uh, let's start with shot of bourbon. Maybe leave the bottle. And uh, I don't know. Just give me some some something. A, a beer. I don't. I don't even give a fuck what kind. You got it, deputy. <laughs> fuck me running up a mud hill backwards. That's what those drinks call for. And he starts to. Hmm. Uh, Go back behind the counter and get your drinks. Um, when he gets back there, and you notice he's got a slight limp. Um, he bends over to get a bill, a beer, out of the uh, cooler. And when he pulls back up, he winces a little bit, sort of grabs towards his hip, and then he reaches in his pocket and pulls out a worn prescription bottle. Takes a pill. Get your beer. How's grabs it, a shot how's glass. It treating you, Wendell. <laughs> like a baby treats a diaper. Hmm. How are you doing? It's never easy, you know. What's uh what's all that business over at the the Blue Rose the other morning? Oh, couple of tweakers from outside of town try to break into Sibby's place. Yeah, tweakers always leave the Blue Rose alone. Why they, uh, <laughs> why a bunch of tweakers wanting to break into a bookstore? I don't, I don't fucking know, Wendell. That's a real good fucking question. I chased hey. one of them off. And the had to shoot one? one? So lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Tweakers. Breaking into bookstores. You hear it all. Yeah, I don't I don't fucking understand it. I mean, what the fuck are they gonna get out of a goddamn bookshop? Scared those poor girls half to death. Sibby was I don't know, she was hanging out with one of her friends or something. Well, you know, I did hear one of them folks from the trailer park come in here the other day to get some uh, grubs. Uh, said something about a, a million dollar Stephen King book. She got a million dollar book up in that store. She'd best sell it to somebody willing to pay for Jesus it because she'll have every tick in town coming to suck blood out of that place. Aunt Lacey needs to keep her fucking mouth shut. She's been spreading that shit all over fucking town. And it ain't fucking true. There's no goddamn way that Sabella has a first edition fucking copy of it. The ding ding. If she had a fucking first edition copy <laughs> of it. She wouldn't be in this fucking town, would she? Jesus fucking Christ. Are these tweakers that goddamn stupid? And probably not. He looks up from his wiping the counter off, just busy work as he's listening to you rant there for a moment as the door opens up, the little bell that jingles when you come in. Um, Actually, I think I said it was a big bell, the cowbell. Was that someplace? I have to check my notes. Um, But it's, it's a kid probably 18 19 maybe in his 20s um it's hard to tell beard kind of dready trying to do dreads maybe in his hair it looks like he walked out of the seattle streets circa 93 92 i mean just grunge right stereotypical and um wendell hey not from around here are you what can i do for you and um 
the kid sort of is like is kind of scratching at his neck through his hair and uh yeah well, you guys got yeah, directions he looks over at you nervously are you, are you got your badge out and you got your badge like in full display do you look like a cop uh, right now no roy uh i'm definitely going to be on administrative leave for at least a day or two gotcha so, so he glances at you but get, pays you no mind and then um asks for directions to uh little rock arkansas which is a few hours sort of south east you're a little ways off from little rock you want to want to go south take the highway it'll meet you up with the interstate take that south a little ways east not too far but uh, you still got a bit of a ways the kid kid looks at you and you immediately know that these directions have just gone right over his head and he looks back at Wendell with sort of this quizzed look on his face. <laughs> You've never seen Wendell do this, but Wendell sort of snaps. Wendell is usually pretty nice. You got even when he's ranting and raving, you know he's there's just this underlying niceness to him. He's just a good guy. Um, but he screams at this kid, Do I look like I'm from fucking Arkansas? Get the fuck out of here. And that kid, like shocked, takes off and leaves. And you can hear a car Damn, speed off. That's well, a bit of aggressive. Goddamn. I don't have time to deal with that nonsense. Jesus Christ, you told him where to fucking go. And don't get me started. My damn knees bother me. And he reaches in his pocket and pulls out a pill bottle and takes another pill. Mendel, you best be careful with those. Oh, uh, yeah. And he quickly shoves them back in. Takes a drink of water. It's none of my business, of course. But I've been hearing all kinds of stuff about, um, uh, what do they say? Opioid addictions. Just, uh, I'll make sure you're taking care of yourself, right? You mean a lot to this town. Oh, you ain't got to worry about me, deputy. Don't have to worry about me at all. He peers out the window. The one little window on the one side of the building. As a car pulls up, this is, we'll say, a little bit later in your conversation. We won't bore everybody with all of the small talk between <laughs> a getting drunk Roy Applebaum and Wendell Saylor. Christ, it could be. It would be amusing for sure um patreon content um but he sometime before you leave a car pulls up and a man comes in the building and he is in a suit and uh wendell acts as if he recognizes him immediately and without a word between either of them they go to the back and in the direction to where wendell's office is out of sight for less than five minutes and then the man leaves Wendell goes back to work do anything seems like a fancier fellow than this place is usually accustomed to oh uh, yeah I'm a bank man Not from the bank here in town. <laughs> uh, oh, no. I'm, no. No, 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 no. I, no, this guy's from uh, Joplin. Hmm. What's he doing in these parts? Oh, he, just come by to get some paperwork. You know, bank stuff. Need another beer? Were you taking out a loan or something? Oh, no, you know, mom's getting old. She's got land and that sort of stuff. You're not trying to 
abscond from the territory, are you? <laughs> oh, boy. Do you think any, any of us get that lucky? That's why I was told that Sabella over there. She'd better just get out of this town because she's way too good for it. Now look what she's got herself thrown into. That place is going to be covered in yellow tape for days. Hmm. Yep, I suppose. Wendell, I best be getting off, but, um, you know, make sure you're not overdoing it, all right? You there got are it. a lot of folks in this town that care about you. He gives you a smile. And you can see that charming high schooler under there somewhere. You have a good time, Mr. Sailor. He doesn't say anything in return. You might have got to him a little bit. Maybe you choked up Wendell just a bit. So that's a good point to take a break. And um, we'll be back in about 10 minutes or so. How's that sound? The good book. Amos 4.11. I have overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Sin is a fire which destroys the comfort of mankind here and all of the joys of mankind hereafter. <laughs> Nothing can be more suitable to burn in a fire than a brand. It's not just a branch taste just taken from some old tree, fresh and full of sap. It is dry, sear timber, fit for the burning. And what does this indicate but man's natural heart, which is so congenial to the fire of sin? As the firebrand fits with fire, so does the sinner fit with sin. We read of a brand in the fire here in the good book. Not lying on a heap, but burning in a blazing in the fire. Does not this portray our condition? We began early, very early. Disobedience to parents, angry tempers, petty falsehoods, these brothers and sisters were the first catchings of fire on that brand. We've blazed away merrily since then, what with the lusts of flesh or pride or unbelief or some other form of departing from the living God. How many are like the fire brand blazing and flashing in the flame. There is, however, a fair side to the picture. You see, we have here a brand plucked out of the fire. Sinners these who thought they have still within them the propensity to sin are no longer in the fire of sin. They've been taken away from it. They sin through infirmity. But willful sin they do not commit. The fire that once burned within them has been quenched. They are rescued from that fire which once threatened their everlasting destruction. They are brand still but brands no longer in the fire. 
the force of the passage seems to lie in the words plucked out of. The Christian does not accept by his own free will. He is plucked out of his peril. To be plucked out, there needs to be a hand quick to rescue. And rescue it shall. We must bathe in the blood of the Savior, or forever stay alight within the fires of sin. Let me say that again. We must bathe in the blood or stay alight in the fire. Every believer in the Lord is a trophy of strength as well as the mercy of God. Let us pray. The camera pans around the congregation at the light of light. We see Lacey and Earl Graves. We see Will Hutchinson. We see Georgia Hammonds, Little Oliver. We see the Housers, Ray, Mary Ellen. That must be Grandma and some cousins. She looks rather old, and they are, of course, quite young. And at the end of the pew, we see Eleanor. Eleanor, describe yourself for the audience, please. All right. Well, um, I am wearing a olive green dress, and my long dark hair is tied in a bun, looking very proper for church. Um, I have dark brown eyes. I am half Chinese, so kind of out of place with the rest of the housers, but no, don't really notice anymore. Um, that's me. Anything interesting about uh, the way you dress or haircut? No, um, Ellen, I, I mean, I <laughs> try Just to... Curious live within the expectations of the Hauser family. So I'll, I try to dress very proper, um, very clean. My hair is, and it's not in a- Conservative. Line. It's usually long and straight. Conservative, yes. <laughs> Conservative on the outside, for sure. Nice. Well, Reverend Abernathy Page continues on and finishes the sermon by holding both of his hands up and in salutations say, Light be with you. And also with you. He says, Join us in the community room so that we may all break bread together in fellowship and light. And we move to the community room where the potluck lunch is being held. One of the things I liked about church as a kid the spread consists of all of the staples, mini sandwiches, French dressing, and Dorito taco salad, macaroni salad, five different noodle casseroles of which you cannot tell how they will taste, but you take a scoop of at least one of them. Speaking to the audience, I'm going to ask you about what you eat in a minute. Potato chips, several different potato salads. A baked ham, green beans, corn on the cob, squash, and zucchini, cucumber salad, crock pots of little smokies drenched in barbecue sauce, chicken and noodles, macaroni and cheese, and chili. The dessert table is loaded with pies and cookies and cakes, brownies more than all of them could possibly eat. There are small white styrofoam cups filled with iced tea and water dripping with condensation in this air-conditioned room. A true smorgasbord. It's regardless of how you feel about the sermon or the circumstance, the feeling of community can't be ignored as nearly a hundred people break bread together. You get your plate and find a chair. What's on your plate? 
man. Um, I would say mostly vegetables for sure. Um, just picking out, like trying to pick out at least a bit of everything to be polite. Um, I guess mostly sticking to vegetables. We'll dig into some chicken and noodles for sure. That's always a favorite. So you go to uh, extremes um, with the vegetables. You like you got like all oh, this big, yeah, <laughs> conscience conserving vegetable plate, and then on the side, a nice bowl of starchy <laughs> chicken and noodles. Yes. I love it. That's that's perfect in my book. Um, let me ask you this: How do you feel being here? You can elaborate as much as you want. What are your thoughts and feelings? Because I, I, I don't know what Eleanor, um, what your relationship with the church is. I mean, you, you mentioned, here's the clue that I'm picking up. You said you try to stay within the standards of the family, which means you are sort of leaning towards rebelling and have to somehow pull away from yes. that in a sense. So, um, with that in mind, yeah, tell us, tell the audience about your relationship with the church a little bit. Well, I was raised within the church. I mean, we would go every Sunday. Um, I know the prayers. I frequently pray, like we pray at the dinner table. Well, anytime we have a meal, really. Um, so religion has been a very big part of my life. However, me personally, I don't feel a strong connection with the church. I don't feel a strong connection with God. So, but I definitely keep that part of me and my thoughts very deep inside of me. I do not, I try to not like indicate anything that would lead my family to believe that I, my thoughts and beliefs deviate otherwise. You but mentioned, I go put ahead. put on a good face. Right. Oh, oh, no. I put on a good face. I do. Yeah, what's asked, what's told of me, or expected of me, really. Um, but I am uncomfortable internally being here and listening to the sermon. I'm going to poke on that for just a second. You mentioned something about being um, half Chinese. Are you uh, mm -hmm. adopted, or is this something in the Housers that we just haven't learned about yet? Uh, this is something, uh, the latter. So oh, okay. my mother, Elizabeth, when she went off to college, um, she met a uh, Chinese man named Jonathan E. And they fell in love pretty quickly, got married right out of college. And unfortunately, before I was born, um, my father left my mother and... So she's um, later. He, yeah. She's a Hauser. Which then? She is a Hauser. Yeah. Okay, so she wasn't a married Hauser. Mm -hmm. She was. She's a blood Hauser. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll come back yeah. to that at some point. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> when you sit down with your vegetables and chicken and noodles, your um, aunt, Mary Ellen, Hauser. Ray's wife. Mm -hmm. They are the uh, baby boomer, you know, rich ranchers in the area is sort of their overall archetype, I suppose, if you were taking a general consensus. Um, sits down with her plate across from you at one of these, you know, big, long community tables. You know, it's like those folding tables that you can never find anywhere except at church gatherings that somehow seem to unfold into links that are just <laughs> biblical. She says um, nothing and folds her hands and bows her head. And then after she's done praying, um, she looks up from her plate at you. Did you bow your head or did you watch her pray? Um, I bowed my head. Yep. So... After the prayer, she just sort of looks at you with this disapproving glint in her eye. Vegetables, 
and chicken and noodles. That's what you're going to have. Do you think that's enough chicken yeah. and noodles to uh, fill you out a little bit? We'll see, won't we? Well, yes. Either one, those vegetables are going to make you so skinny that's no good. Or, you know, just going with chicken and noodles, right? That's going to make you fat. You're just going to get one of those big bus driver butts. <laughs> Mm. don't really just kind of yeah I don't really say I just kind of laugh and start slowly picking up my food not really making eye contact with her mm. she just sort of sits there poking at her food but she's you know she's not looking at it you don't have to look up to know that she's just staring at you just watching what you do. What did you think of the pastor's sermon? Did you learn something, Eleanor? I learned that we must bathe in the blood or else we will burn the fire. Just well, so. yes, those are very good textbook answers, Eleanor, but you got to survive in this world. And I'm asking, did you learn anything else? You know, sometimes I just don't think you pay attention at all. I really don't think you care. I really don't. Sometimes I wonder if your mother is really your mother. Wow. Did that sting? A bit, yes. <laughs> yes, it did. Well, you know, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> looks being obviously what they are, right? I'm sure that somehow influences your approach to life and obviously your eating habits. What did you learn? It's Ellen Mary? Mary Ellen? Mary Ellen. Mary. I learned, young Eleanor, that no matter what we do in this world, we are never that far from a helping hand willing to pull you out of it and put you right on the square and straight, right on that narrow path towards heaven. Here, take my hand. And she reaches across the table and she's got sort of those cold, dry, rich old woman hands. <laughs> and she squeezes almost painfully. Dear God, you need to be watching out over our dear Eleanor. Half of her she can't control, and the other half just doesn't know what to do. Bless this child, and give her the sense to eat some ham and macaroni and cheese. Some green beans. Broccoli and carrot sticks will not suffice. Amen. There. Now maybe we can get you square with the Lord. Do you think we can get that done? so where do you live where does um eleanor live at this is me the gm asking um eleanor lives on the family ranch she lives in a loft above their garage oh good i thought maybe and i just saved myself the embarrassment of inviting you to the ranch which is what your aunt would normally do with any of your Mm -hmm. You have lots of cousins that come to the ranch throughout your time, you know, spend sometimes weeks, mm -hmm. months, never for, you know, longer than 
one or two years has been the longest that any of these cousins and such. And, you know, it's always been, oh, they got into a little trouble back home and you know how it is. So they got sent off to the country farm. Mary Ellen continues to uh, dig in you as you peck away at your food. Now, here's here's the real question, and I'm just doing this so that the audience gets some insight into um, Eleanor before we uh, end up switching scenes. Um, how far into your vegetables and macaroni and cheese do you get before um, you finally have had your have have met your tolerance for Aunt Mary Ellen. Are you to the point to where you can you can do the whole deal, or are you still at a I get halfway or three quarters, and I'm a oh I, all right I'm gonna go see Josie or whatever. Yeah, I would definitely make a decent attempt at eating my food, probably three fourths of the way done, and be like, oh I see this person over there. Let me right. I'm gonna go talk to them right now. Nice. There is one moment that I will leave you with, Eleanor. Welcome to Heartland, by the way. That <laughs> as you are at that moment in the conversation with Mary Ellen, where she seems to be riding on you, and she goes through the list. You, you know the list of things that your family does not like about you. She hits yep. each point as if there is some sort of checklist in her mind. Get her on this. <laughs> Get her on her weight, um, too skinny, too fat, um, too half and half. Yeah, they always find subtle ways to insert, even in the prayer, you know, you know what she was alluding to when she somehow split your psyche. Why would somebody do that? So when you have reached that fill and you're sort of trying not to look at her because you just want to punch her, I would imagine, maybe, I don't know. Do you think like that? Do you get to the point where you just want to punch her in the face? Yes. yes one, of, one of those weird I, obviously movie. I don't. Yeah, one of those weird movie moments where you're eating lunch with somebody you hate and then they reach over and just punch that person and then it cuts back to them eating their food like they had just imagined that mm -hmm. they reached over. Yeah, I could see that happening. That doesn't, though. What you do notice is that at the table, in the row behind her. So uh, there's two bodies in front of you, but there's a space that you can kind of see around Aunt Mary Ellen over to the other table. And this person is just gorging themselves on mashed potatoes and gravy. They have a, a one of those styrofoam divided plates, the wide ones, and it is loaded from edge to edge. It is even has spilled over onto the table a little bit from when they probably set it down there's little bits of potato and they are using their hands and as you stop sort of eating your food or maybe you continue to eat as you're watching this your aunt Mary Ellen continues to rant and this person is just shoveling these potatoes and mashed potatoes and gravy on their face with their fingers as if their hands are these massive shovels just piling this food into their mouth and that's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna change scenes we're going to Daisy's house I should have gave him just 10 more seconds huh Daisy that was a quick change I was hot on the trigger today we're good yeah so I have some questions for you guys I realized I just played the wrong scene music that last scene. <laughs> I was playing Daisy's House music during the Reverend's speech. That might have sounded kind of strange. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, so, whether you did or didn't end up going to the hospital for that night, um, it, my story was written as if we were going to make you go to the hospital that night. Um, but I'll give you the uh, option to tell me if you did or didn't. But there are a couple of things. It's four days later. You haven't been able to go back into the Blue Rose at all. Um, when you left that night, 
whatever you had on you was what you were allowed to take because your residence and business and the surrounding area is considered a crime scene um, where a homicide took place. So, um, my first question is, did you go to the hospital or, um, did you refuse that? No, I went. Then my second question is, Daisy, did you go and stay at the hospital with her or, um, how, uh, what was the depth of your involvement just in that hospital stay? I, uh, yes, I did go to the hospital and um, probably mostly stayed in the waiting room or lobby uh, while she was getting taken care of. And then I would stay with her overnight, fall asleep in that uh, uncomfortable chair with the hard back. Right. Yeah, these uh, hospitals in these smaller cities are suffering budgetary cuts. They don't have the nice, cushy sleepover couches. Or um, I think they are actually like chaise lounges or something they put in there now. I'm not quite sure. These these big stuffed looking, kind of funny looking couch things. Um, so after the hospital, I'm assuming then, Sabella, you go, uh, well, let me ask. Daisy, would you invite Sabella to stay with you until she can get back into her home? Yeah, without a doubt. Then four days later at Daisy's house, where in the house um, might you be in, say, uh, when you get up in the mornings? What's your uh, morning routine, girls, on day four of your sleepover, of your extended sleepover? Breakfast, coffee time, what do you guys do? Uh, I would probably much to, you know, it probably worries Daisy, but, uh, I would stay in my room a lot, actually, and only ever come out for meals or if Daisy, you know, forced me out. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that... That gives me what I need then. So it is then the morning of day four. It is, uh, I don't know, what time do you attempt to breakfast and coffee, Sabella, in the morning, Daisy? By knocking on the door, which I'm assuming uh, is probably now turned into a, a thing for you. I eat breakfast very early because I tend to wake up very early, um, usually crack it on, and then I wait till a, I I wait a respectful time to like 9 a.m. or so um, before I knock on Sabella's door. And I'm not, I haven't been pressuring her to say anything or really do anything or even talk to me. I've just been leaving food at her door, um, leaving water. Uh, sometimes talking through the door to make sure that she's still in there. Right. Um, but today it's been four days, and so I'll wait till the 9 a.m. and I'll knock on her door, but I don't have food with me this time. All right. Um, the, um, hang on a second I before you do that. I want to go to Wendell's. Oh, you're going to get something from Wendell's first? Tell me that, because I want that information too. I want to I wanna get her out of the house. I'm going to turn um, this over to you at some point. So. It's been four days. Uh, she's been mostly locked into the room, whether it be one of the upstairs rooms, because there's plenty of rooms up there that have hardly been touched, or um, a room on the main floor where Daisy's room is. Um, I've been normally like letting her have her solitude, because I'm a fan of my own solitude. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't let her have hers. Um, but today, I kind of pound on the door and instead of just saying a good morning in a gruff voice and leaving cereal outside um i knock we're going to wendell's today what what 
You need some proper food other than that grain bullshit. We're going to Wendell's. Ugh. I... I don't know, Daisy. If you don't get enough va vitamin D or something in the sun, you're not going to be healthy. She's she's trying, and you, <laughs> Savella, you probably hear like her trying to force herself to justify you leaving the room. <laughs> You'll hear like the creak of the bed as Sabella gets out of it, like from the other side of the door, and the door opens, and <laughs> you see me, and I look just disheveled as fuck. Her hair looks like she hasn't combed it in a few days. Like, she's wearing an oversized t-shirt, you know, baggy sweatpants. You've never seen Sabella look this much like shit before. <laughs> Which room did you pick? I don't even bat an eye. What? Which room did you pick? Upstairs. The upstairs room? What have you guys yeah. been um, filling your days with, Sabella? Have you been spending the whole time in the room? You been that distant? You guys haven't really done much. You're not like putting so puzzles gay. together, or <laughs> all right. I've called upstairs to invite her to come uh, watch uh, Wheel of Fortune with me, or maybe yeah. just be in hunting or something. Yeah, she'll. Sabella will make the rare appearance, watch TV for a few hours, not much small talk. We watch Jeopardy and I yell at the TV. Yeah, and I correct your answers. <laughs> Where is Baba Duke? Oh, God, I hope I brought him with me. I don't like him, but he can stay. Babadook has always had a, a special way of finding where I am. Uh, so after the hospital, he was kind of just at Daisy's front door, waiting. Hmm. <laughs> Makes a note. <laughs> That makes me nervous. I know. Please don't cut my cat. I feel like I've already achieved my purpose just by asking about him. <laughs> the, um... But yeah, he, he comes and goes as he pleases. I'm sure there's lots of mice out around Daisy's house that he's gonna go pester and hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that house. Yeah, there's definitely some mice in that place. The um. All right, so then, I think I have all the information I need, Daisy. I will let you continue to um persuade this wreck of a Sabella that has just appeared before you in her night clothes and three days of bed hair. I do a quick once over of you and raise an eyebrow. This a uh, little bit different than your normal fishing outfit. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, all my clothes are back at the rose. I. I just found these. I'm sorry. No, you're all right. You're all right. It's mine is yours. Here, get in. I'll uh, sit on the bed. I'll get your hair brushed out. Uh, Daisy, you don't have to... Let me be tender. I do it every once in a rare while. Just let it happen. Don't bitch. Uh, all right, all right. And Sabella, like huffs and goes and sits on the bed i uh enter the room after her and look around it's an old room there's not a lot of 
decor in the house and if there is it's old lady decor that's been there since the 70s um it's probably just a guest room that's been there forever there's dust along shelves and i walk in and there's a bathroom connected to the room and i find an old brush um in one of the drawers and come back over to her and sit on the bed Take a deep breath, about to go into some kind of story. Sabella probably knows Daisy's telltale signs. She kind of tenses up and shakes her shoulders out a little bit and reaches up to start uh, brushing the tangles out of her hair. That the first time you've ever seen someone die? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, what, what you see on TV, it, it doesn't really, it's not really the same. No, it's fake blood and drama, drama. Yeah, it's, it's all camera work and lights and, and they don't really capture the, the feeling of you know when when someone's actually actually dead from a gun ten feet away from you, uh, it... Sabella, make me a roll a soul roll. See through the illusion. <laughs> so well. I'm not exactly gentle. Like I'm stuck on a knot while you're talking and I'm just like like <laughs> pulling. Yeah. Sabella won't say anything even though it hurts. She's tough. I got a 16. Yeah. So you don't really have any um, visions or anything of the bad stuff that I have listed in front of me. Um, oh, <laughs> but in your conversation, and because it is related to the fact that Daisy just asked if you'd ever seen somebody killed like that, I'm going to say one sentence for Sabella that is just sort of the subconscious. She doesn't know why these words come out of her mouth. Well, there was that one time, you know, the time you killed the boy. I, I mean, the boy drowned is how it comes out or however Sabella would say that, but that's the intent. Carry on. Ah! I sort of pause halfway through brushing her hair when she says that, and I, I look at her, and the sort of hard expression is gone for a minute, and I'm surprised. I didn't, uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. No, it's fine. It's fine. No, no, Daisy, I know what we saw out there. It wasn't, you didn't, you didn't do that. Well, I know I didn't. I, I saw it. I saw the, the fucking... The shit, the fucking lake moss, the, the, it was just so much. I saw it, Daisy. I know you're not crazy. I know I'm not crazy. <sighs> you real, you really think that's what you saw? The moss, right? Yeah. I only okay. shot one one bullet, right? Yes. You shot the one, it hit the radio, the fucking, the, the boysy, boys radio. And the, the, yeah, it, you, tried to, you tried to get that kid out from the river and, and, and there was just handfuls of it. No, it's it's fine. You know, we 
we take experiences from our past and mistakes and we keep them in mind and we move on. Daisy, this shit keeps happening to me. I, I gotta tell you something about what else I saw, you know, the night of the, 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 the tweakers. It wasn't, Her- it wasn't just tweakers in the house, Daisy. What do you mean? And she like pauses and, you know, maybe rubs her head and she kind of turns back to look at you. There's something that's now what, what, what did you see? It was something else. It was something evil and mean and not of this world, Daisy. It was, it was, I know what I saw. And it was like the walls were breathing. They were expanding and contracting and the tweakers don't make whole walls breathe. No, no, they don't. And the, and the boy with the moss and that unnatural shit and I just I'm worried I'm worried I'm I think there's something after me hold on we can't do something real quick I didn't want to interrupt. I got an eight on intuition. Sibella, roll charisma. A four. Wow. (laughs) I am not very charismatic as a person. This is interpreted as you both are going to continue your scene, but there is this underlying doubt. Do the, does the other person really believe I'm being sincere when I say these things? And carry on. You don't. Neither one of you are 100% certain that the other person means what they say right now. Did you, you know, you, you had your little, your little girlfriend over, were you guys smoking something? Fuck, Daisy. Listen, I'm just trying to check all the boxes here. You know what? You know what? I've seen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were were having a good time. We were smoking, you know, is what. Alright, well that might explain the walls. No! Oh my... You know what? Just forget it. No, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm just trying to help you. No, it's... It's stupid. It's stupid. I... Don't... Don't mind me. Sabella. I know what I saw. Bella, I will mind you every day. I don't know if that if that came out right. I I know all the all the the signs point to it just being my adrenaline or the drugs or whatever the fuck, but I I I can feel it. I feel it in my soul and I don't know how I feel it. It's just it's bad. It's a it's like it's like knowing someone's mad at you and you can and you 
like feel them giving you the cold shoulder except this time the cold shoulder I think wants to kill me and I'm afraid I'm afraid that they're gonna get you and it's gonna get L and I just I would never be able to forgive myself if anything happened You blame happens. yourself? What? For what? For the fire, what you're saying right now, do you do you blame yourself? Or do you think it was this <sighs> a creature after you? I don't know. I think there was something definitely wrong about that fire. You I know, think so too. You know my mama. She she wasn't careless like that, Daisy. She she baked all the time. It, it doesn't make sense that she would just leave the oven on and it would it catch fire randomly. She doesn't do that. You know, I think now I know I know what you're going to think about this, but I, I truly believe that it started then and the, the, the something, I don't know if it's a creature or a, or, or paranormal or what, but I think it's after my whole family. I think it's, it's trying to wipe us clean. You know, I've been, I've been, I've been seeing some strange happenings too. The other day I was out, I was out hunting coyotes. They've been harassing Bess. Mm -hmm. And I went out to the field. Shot them down. Yeah. But the curious thing was, and, and I lower the brush from her hair and kind of set it in my lap. They were rotting. And now I just fresh shot these coyotes. I know I might have one eye, but, but it's sharp. And I know... I shot them fresh clean that day. Within minutes. And I don't... I don't talk a lot about my time overseas. I, I blocked quite a bit of that out, actually. But all my life, I know that the strange things have a way of happening, and people die every day, horribly. But there's there's something weird about Providence. I'm 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 with you there, and those those tweakers, they <laughs> you know they weren't the best people, but they weren't breaking into the Blue Rose type of people. Yeah. I think that when the store reopens, we need to we need to go look through some books. We need to break out your crystal ball. We need to We need to figure some things out that old Roy won't be able to do. But first, before any of that, you need to get up. You need to get out into the world. You need to get out of this damn godforsaken room. And you need to come with me and get breakfast at Wendell's. Because you're not going to get anything done just eating cereal every day of your life. Okay. All right. Good. Beautiful. Sounds like we have a plan. I think that is then a perfect segue to... Nothing to end the show. And uh, let me see if I can find the button that's got all my groups. See, that's how Curtis stalls for just a moment to let everybody, <laughs> everybody we have left get back on camera. There they are, except poor Elliot, who had some things to do. So um, she was nice enough to keep her Zoom on for us so I didn't have to scramble. Thank you to her. Thank you to everyone, especially out there watching. 
Heartland on the Colt channel. Thank you to my wonderful cast for such a fantastic job tonight creating the story with me, me and filling it with character, <laughs> I suppose is the right word. Um, we're going to uh, do our outros a little differently tonight. Um, and I want to start by welcoming back to the TTRP theater stage. I know we're on a different channel now, but, uh, still a TTRP theater production, uh, Olivia, who goes all the way back as a founding, I, I call a founding cast member of our very first TTRPG live stream, Greyhawk city. She was there for all of the ugly <laughs> when we were streaming. <laughs> oh, everything Curtis could do wrong. That was when I was doing it for sure. We are all, um, and I think I can comfortably say this for everybody, very happy that you have joined us on Heartland. And I'm going to begin with you. What was your favorite part of tonight's episode, whether it's a scene you were in or was not in or, uh, is meta or story doesn't really matter. Um, and then what does, what does Olivia want to learn about Eleanor that you don't already know? So, uh, what was your favorite part? We'll start with that. Um, my favorite part, I'm probably pretty biased, but it would be the scene that I was in. I thought I'm very excited to be here and very excited to play. So that was awesome. <laughs> nice. nice. I love I that. What? What does, uh, it was very good. It was one of my favorite ones too. And that was fun being Mary Ellen for just a moment. Um, I <laughs> felt kind of mean, a little guilty afterwards. What do you, <laughs> Olivia, want to learn about Eleanor? I want to learn more about her relationship with her family. Like, is everybody in the house or family like that towards her? Is it just Mary Ellen? Is she the only bitch or is it right. everybody? So very excited to explore Eleanor's relationship with her family and the rest of the community. Of Interesting. Providence. Excellent. Plus this is how I cheat and take notes for future writing. Um, all right. Uh, can our fans follow you on social media and become your fans? And if so, what are you working on? Are you doing anything creative at the moment? What, what are you filling your life with now besides the boring and mundane? I mean, I know everybody's 90% bullshit, um, but there's 10%, <laughs> there's 10 percent out there that, that, that keeps us alive. What's that 10% for you? Oh man. Uh, Whew, being if, outdoors. If you can, <laughs> if you can share it. Oh yeah. yeah. You do yeah, do a lot of camping. I, uh, I do do a lot of camping. It's definitely. I think that pre uh, prevents me from playing more, but, um, yeah, doing a lot of camping as far as creative projects go. Um, I'm whittling, trying to like carve a oh. bird right now. It's pretty dope. Nice. Yeah. You have to give Daisy uh, some lessons or maybe Daisy can give you some lessons. I know, I was just about to say, Daisy can give me some po uh, pointers, there's definitely like some angles that are tricky for me, but um, <laughs> as far as like social media goes, <laughs> uh, people can follow me on Twitter, that's like the most public social media platform I have, that is Liv Ellis 29 yeah, that is my handle, Liv Ellis 29 so if you want to follow me, go follow me there, follow obviously Discord and the TTRP channel on Twitch and YouTube. So sweet. All right. Now um, we are very happy to have you back. And I was going to do Erica next. She's gone. So we're going to do Chris. Um, Chris, what was your favorite part of tonight's episode? And what does Roy, or I'm sorry, what does Chris want to learn about Roy? Uh, I think my favorite part uh was roy actually being able to shut daisy up <laughs> cuz i never saw it coming i thought she'd fight me every second of that scene that we were in together <laughs> and it's like oh 
oh, it actually worked. <laughs> Yeah, and that, and that was good both ways Next because time. it was it was it was a good example of Roy, and it was also a good moment for Daisy, who you got to see just a, a small crack in that veneer of hers, which I like. Um, what do you want to learn about Roy? I don't know. I think uh, even in tonight's episode, I already learned a little bit more about Roy in that i saw a little bit more of the softer side of him i mean he's not exactly been uh personable in these last <laughs> couple of episodes no i was i was starting to wonder if roy was asshole through and through i really was not that i was against yeah, it i'm um, i like colt so <laughs> and i'm 90 yeah, percent asshole right. myself so <laughs> i don't know he's a uh, you know, he's been through some shit recently. We all have. So it'll be interesting to see how this affects him in the future. What um, fun, wonderful stuff is Chris filling his life with in the 10% that keeps us alive these days? Um, I've been replaying some old games that I used to love a lot. Uh, I'm doing some editing for... A project that Jaylee's going to talk about here shortly. Um, and hanging out with my, my, my two kitties, Margaret Catwood and Mew Jackman. Sweet. Who I will also talk about shortly. Yeah, well, you can go right ahead. That's a perfect segue right into your social, into your social media. Well, I already know you have a spiel, so you can do that now. <laughs> well, speaking of the kitties, you can follow them. Uh, on Mew Jackman's Instagram account, The Greatest Meowman. You can follow me at Chris Stonecipher on Twitter. Uh, technically, I also have my own Twitch channel at Chris Stonecipher. Not that I stream very much on it, but. Um, Which is why they need to go follow you. Fun things. <laughs> so they'll know uh, when you're streaming. We're doing a lot of fun things uh, as. Uh, TTRP theater in general, just our own really fun projects like what Jaylee's going to talk about here very shortly. <laughs> um, uh, and then, of course, this game. Uh, you know, I love this game. So, this is um, what has to scratch my itch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, make sure you check out, uh, by the way, TTRP theater's Discord and our YouTube channel. Uh, we put all of our uh, VODs uh, from these live streams up on our specific YouTube channel uh, if you don't manage to catch them live. So uh, always great places to find us in the social media sphere. Nice. And speaking of social media, and it's a great way to get to my next victim, which is Krista, um, who does have a social media. We'll get to that at the end here. I, I do have this plan for Krista at Krista, um, your Twitter handle. Um, but first, what was your favorite part tonight, Krista? And what does Krista want to learn? And you've thought Sabella through and through. I know that you spend at least a good 10, 15 minutes a day, every day that we're not in, in show in her shoes in one fashion or another. So, um, what could you possibly hope to learn about Sabella that you don't already know? And your favorite part tonight. Okay. So my favorite part. Hmm. I really did like the, the little heartfelt between uh, Sabella and Daisy at the end there. That was really good. That was some good bonding. Um, and I guess that kind of segues into what I want to learn about Sabella is I want to learn, you know, just exactly what is out there. If it is actually her that it's chasing or if it's just, uh, you know, just con like coincidence or is all of Providence plagued with this dark evil. Well, wow. Wow. You just keep pushing it, don't you? Just trying to move me along. I, I, I pick up on the subtext. I can read that stuff. I, I am a practitioner. 
of subtext. <laughs> Um, I'm let me you can pick it up. <laughs> are you filling your life with anything creative other than this stuff at the moment? I am a void of creativity. Are you painting uh, faces? No. Uh, actually, my bosses are gonna let me set up a little table, a little booth outside uh, my bakery on Halloween. So I designed um, my own business cards that I'm going to be giving out and I've been like practicing some easy faces to do for Halloween. Nice. Oh, you know what you really need? A social media handle to tell everybody about that stuff. Where might our fans follow you if they were to do such a thing? You know, they were interested in face painting or cute, talented girls who face paint or any of that sort of type thing. Well, you can always find me on the Instagram at crease of the barista. Uh, but I guess maybe if you really wanted to, I don't know why you would, but I also have a Twitter that I don't post anything on. <laughs> Soon. It's under construction. Thank you. Krista so much for playing along and let's go to Jay Lee Jay Lee what was your favorite part tonight Chris stole it but uh, I oh God, I don't know what it is but every game I feel like I get into some kind of argument with Chris's character and I've been waiting for Daisy and Roy to finally clash heads um, and it was fantastic. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to some of that more. And of course, the heart to heart with Sabella was nice because it's it's easy to be grumpy, Daisy, but it's uh, a new take to be Daisy with how she is around Sabella. And she understands PTSD far more than anyone will know, far more than she herself knows, having blocked quite a bit of that out. Um, so... I liked Roy it. Roy first and the spell is saying, oh, second. Thank you. I liked it. And the mashed potatoes third. Um, as far as, yeah, the mashed potatoes <laughs> is good. <laughs> um, as far as finding out more about Daisy, that's a difficult question because I, I personally have fleshed her out so much. Like I know her entire life history. So like, Finding out anything would be so challenge cool. me. I, I, I do want to find out. I want to find out more about like her war times um, and the difficulties that she struggled with there. Uh, but I know that'll come later as she starts to. Right. Well, you know, for the record, I laid up an I laid up an way. easy one for you tonight when I said something about everybody wondering why everybody was talking about this million dollar book. Just. Just FYI, I do throw you some lifelines from time to time. What fabulous things are you working on? I have to go back about that. <laughs> um, as Chris mentioned, I am working on a project. Uh, we've been working on it for quite a while, actually. It's been in the works for over a year. I remember sitting in Duke's kitchen, um, bouncing off ideas. Yeah, um, bouncing ideas off of him for this grand story that I had in mind. I got burpees. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's a Dungeon World podcast. And for those of you not familiar with Dungeon World, it's a simplified Dungeons and Dragons, basically, trademark. Um, it's super fun, super silly, and I am so excited for it. I don't, I don't want to reveal too much, but it's very fantasy comedy. And... Uh, Chris is doing a fantastic job in helping me because I myself am very untalented when it comes to like technological stuff. Um, so we have Krista, Chris, in that um, Curtis plays in it. He actually gets to have a player role instead of being the one who guides us all. <laughs> and then Rashid, who is another fellow um, TTRP theater who uh, was in the first episode of Greyhawk City, and we go way back with him. 
Uh, very excited for that. If you want to follow that project, you can find it on Twitter at PCs in a pod. That's P C S I N A P O D, all one word. I don't post a lot there just yet because I'm waiting for the official launch. We've got a few episodes under our belt, and we just need to do the groundwork of. Um, putting it all together, you know, there's a lot that goes into these things that you don't realize with music and themes and so much, but I am very, very excited and I'm so grateful to Curtis and Duke for hearing out my crazy story idea and letting it um, happen. So there's that that I'm working on and uh, I've been carving pumpkins recently because it's the spooky season. So there's that. I'm nice. probably going to carve another one tomorrow. <laughs> Nice. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jahoy underscore Matey, like the pirates say. Um, and also the Twitter, the Twitter, the Discord. You should join the Discord at TTRP Theater, which is kind of confusing because our Twitch handle is Colt, but you find us on TTRP Theater. Also, I just want to mention one thing in my long winded rant. I always talk for so long. But uh, T Dorf, Tim, made these excellent shirts for all of us. Yes, Everybody thank you. flex your shirts. Look how cool they are. He's a tie dye champion. So thank you, Tim. Uh, Tim is an active member of our Discord and someone who watches all the streams. Um, so I definitely wanted to give like an in person shout out to him. Uh, but that's that's all that's all I have Sweet. to say. Sweet. Thank you. That was perfect. You covered everything. Um, and that's why I, I have you go last, because I know you, you have lots to say. <laughs> well, and it just goes to show you, too, I, this thought occurred to me while you were um, talking about your podcast. I know that everybody, especially a lot of um, TTRPG players, just really are dying to just jump up off the street and make a podcast or do a live stream. There it is. It's harder than it looks. I'll just put it that way. It's harder than it looks. It's taken us a year to even get to, you know, what I would call decent amateur level. So um, she, she's been working hard at that. And um, yeah, we're just a few production items, some graphics and that sort of promotional material before we can get that first episode out. But it is coming very soon. Um, I always ask these questions and never answer them. So my favorite part tonight was um, I, I, the mashed potatoes keep coming to my head. Um, Duke and I always go through sort of towards the end of the writing process and I'll go to the the skeleton that he's built and started putting in bits and pieces of flesh and I'll start adding freckles and moles and that's where I call it, you know, to stick with the metaphor and um, these little details and we came up with some pretty good ones at the end of it, the, the little dabbing of blood, just little gross things that we have to come up with, like what are some just tiny little details that you can come up with that are uncomfortable or weird, but because they're sleepers, they don't know that there's something nefarious about it, even though Sibella keeps saying like there's something bigger out there than there really is. It's weird. Um, what do I hope to learn about the Game Master? Not a thing. I know all of the secrets, um, except what next week's episode is going to be. I have no idea because we're still writing it, or Duke is still writing it, actually. Thanks again to my cast, and thank you, the audience, for watching live tonight or later on demand. My name is Curtis. You can reach me on Twitter at OldCurtisVO. And uh, the best place is on uh, Discord, um, although I don't answer right away because um, I get 30 to 40 of those direct messages a day, so sometimes it takes me a minute to get to you. Um, but you can reach out there and on Twitter, and there's a whole bunch of other people to talk to there as well. I'm the Twitch director um, for us and uh, for the Cult channel uh, and Helmgast, and who knows, maybe we'll end up running a couple other Twitch channels here in not too awful long, but uh, TTRP Theater produces all sorts of things. We've been doing some other uh, Kickstarter videos. I got Jay Lee to do some voice work for one of those recently, so she does do some other things for us, and I got Roy doing some editing up there, so we all chip in around here, and Rashid, I've got him up to here in some projects now. Um, he probably hates me at this point, but he has been with us from the beginning, and I do so, um, as I told him today, Love the fact that I have him in my Rolodex and am in forever debted to him and um, our supporters, most importantly, Tim. Thank you so much.
thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everything you do. Just beyond the shirts. The shirts are just like, uh, here's a three-pointer for you guys. Loved it. Um, I'm also, I said all that. Uh, so if you want to find out more about TTRP Theater, go to ttrptheater.com. Um, if I am up on it, you'll have everything. Uh, I think it's pretty much up to date right now. Thanks, Helm Guest, for this amazing game. If any of our viewers would like to start playing Cult Divinity Lost, go to cultdivinitylost.com. It's all there. Uh, free resources, starter scenarios, and more. Um, be kind to each other. And please, please, please make a plan to vote and vote. Registrations have already come and gone. Uh, the deadlines in many states, mail-in balloting has already, deadlines have already come and gone. Democracy is acting under pressure to keep it together. So go vote. Are you going to help or hinder? There's my little cult dig. Thanks again, everyone. Good night. Sweet dreams. And we love you. Say it. Good night. Good night. Sweet dreams. We love, we love you. you. There we go. Now, see, I changed all this stuff. I just had it, and now I can't figure it out. <laughs> there. Thank you.